The High Street area of Stebbing is itself worth a wander before or after this walk. The mix of Tudor and Georgian houses has been lovingly restored to provide the kind of scene that typifies the image of an English village. We leave the High Street via the church using quiet lanes and byways to reach the hamlet of Bardfield Sailing. Our return emphasises extensive views across the neighbouring countryside before visiting the mound and moat of a Norman castle. This is a walk for sunny spring days when the tracks are dry, the trees are in bud although still bare enough to reveal the vestiges of last year's nests and the hawthorn is in bloom. If you decide to go in late March you will have the bonus of violets and daffodils in the verges and a complete carpet of primroses in the churchyard at Bardfield Sailing. Good afternoon again everyone and welcome back to Essex. I'm joined by the very lovely Candice. Hello. We're in the finest county in the country today. My, well our home county of Essex and we're going to be starting a new little guidebook this one is Essex year round walks and this book's actually quite hard to come by Candice has, has really had to sort of hunt this one down and she finally managed to get hold of a copy from the printer it actually prints the books yeah you actually had to go yeah, to them I emailed them so and they were really lovely and they got me a copy so. she's absolutely brilliant yeah cool. Um, so yeah we really like this series of books mm -hmm. and whilst it's spring at the moment we're doing the spring walks from the East Sussex mm -hmm. book um, in this series and now this Essex one as mm -hmm. well so we're going to sort of put the Hertfordshire yeah. ones on hold and mm -hmm. our day walks are going to be either like East Sussex or Essex yeah. and then you get like five walks per season mm -hmm. in each book so this one today is in the little village of Stebbing which is kind of near Dunmo, Felsted. It's actually the area I originally grew up in before uh, we moved to where I live now and I actually used to go to private school in Felsted. absolutely hated it I might add uh, <laughs> and it's a really really lovely part of Essex, part of East Anglia in general really, it's absolutely lovely here. Lots of history, lots of old houses, half timbered houses and very quaint. Nice churches, it's very quaint, it is, yeah. So this walk is six and a quarter miles, did you say? Six and a half. Six and a half miles, I stand corrected, said the man in the orthopedic shoes. <laughs> We've just arrived at the parish church in Stebbing. Mm. We parked the car in the high street. Uh, I think there used to be at least two pubs now I think there's only one yeah. one that we saw the White yeah. Hart so and of course pubs are kind of open at the moment they're opening just their gardens so no doubt we'll go and have as Candy says a cheeky half in there later hopefully on hopefully if they're open yeah there's also there's also remains of a Motton Bailey Castle here in Stebbing I, th I think it's called the Mount Literally, it's like a mound, you know, maybe a ditch, I think. So, still pretty cool. You know what I'm going to say. Enough talking. Let's get walking.
Ahead is the church of St Peter and St Paul of Bardfield Sailing with its unusual round tower. Opposite is the fine old house of Arundel's with its highly active dovecot and offer of local honey for sale. Although round tower churches are common in Norfolk where there are 126 and in Suffolk where there are 42, there are only six in Essex. The church of St Peter and St Paul is probably the last medieval example built in Britain. Its construction was thought to have been delayed by the Black Death. It is still standing upright despite being dedicated by the Bishop of Pisa in the early 14th century. So we're just in the little graveyard here at the, the Round Towered Church, Bardfield Sailing just outside Stebbing, absolutely lovely. Right, so we have got some sarnies which Candice made. They're on this different bread, I don't know what it is. Tom doesn't like them. I, I don't mind it, it's just different. <laughs> it's, different yeah. it's apparently healthier because it's very thin bread, but I think it looks like it's designed to go in like a toaster or like a toasty making machine. So we've got those, we've got some crisps, the usual stuff, protein bars, some chocolate bars. We've already had the cookies and I ate my muffin. Yeah, that's it. So my mum made some, um, she made like homemade chocolate chip muffins, but she says she's like left them in too long. They weren't burnt, but they were like, she says, oh, they're too like tough and like dry and stuff like that. I personally really like them. Candice likes them. And then she also made some... I think chocolate chip cookies that were very soft and moist I'm going to use that word and she was not happy with them either but we both liked them so <laughs> who knows who knows my mum's got very high standards when it comes to her, her cooking there you go. yeah hang on let's hold them a bit closer <laughs> from a distance they look like crackers like giant they're not crackers but they're not and they're very thin you see honestly I still like them it's just I feel like I have to eat a lot more of them to actually feel full up but I suppose that's the idea if you're on a diet or something you'd be having those wouldn't you I'm not on a diet crisps oh I've got some hot water as well for herbal teas that's our cider that we've got the rhubarb and ginger cider bold and tangy gentle warmth made from English apples and it's an Asda Extra Special, a passion for quality, established in 2001. <laughs> it's 4%, the magic number. Uh, our Extra Special Cider is wonderfully intense with a sweet and tingling warmth. Should we crack the cider open now? Yeah, go on. Go on. Oh, we've, oh, we've got it. Why right. are we rolling the camera? Exactly. Oh. Cheers everyone, that smells good. Whoa, oh, I've got a, a sniff of that. Oh, that smells lovely. Smell really ginger, eh? No, I can smell the rhubarb. Yeah. Right. Oh. I have to make a confession. I'm not very good, I don't like ginger. So, yeah. We'll see how you get on with it though. Mm. I find rhubarb and ginger go well together. ginger's quite strong you might not like it i i think that's nice the ginger so i i didn't expect as much ginger as that that's really nice so i look i do like that <clears throat> a little bit overpowering on the ginger i think the rhubarb's still there you still taste it but the ginger is very very prevalent that would be a really nice winter cider mm. um yeah I'm just surprised by it. I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm just really surprised by that. How strong that ginger is. Sorry, go on. <laughs> I it, it gets at least a nine for me. What do you reckon? Do it's alright. It's alright. It's, it's the, the ginger. It's the ginger. It's a lot of ginger in it. It's definitely bold and tangy. Yeah. You're not, ginger not, hits your throat as well yeah <laughs> you're not a massive fan then no you got a score yet 
I'll give it a seven because it's a good cider. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's personal preference as well. Of course, yeah. Do you know what? Actually, I'm going to give it slightly less than a nine. I think the ginger is a little bit too strong. It does overpower the rhubarb a bit. But it's still, it's still probably my favourite one out of the three. The passion fruit and pineapple was really good. Uh, Clementine and cranberry. That was good, but I... Good. It was different, but I wouldn't say it was my favourite personally. I think it was your favourite, wasn't it? Mm. I'm going to give it an 8.9. <laughs> it's not quite a 9, but it's an 8.9. Yeah. 8.9 out of 10 for that bad boy. Rhubarb and ginger cider from Asda's. Yeah, it's definitely different. And I would buy all three ciders again. Yeah, I mean, they're good ciders. They're very, very good. Anyone that's a cider drinker, if you bought them those three ciders as like a gift, I think they'd be... They'd be... Mm happy well unless you like strong plain tasting ciders um if they just I don't tone the ginger down a little diddy 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 bit it'd be me. fine a hundred percent agree i think if they turned the ginger down a bit i'm still really pleased with that so yeah there have been three really good ciders mm. we've had from asters well done asters right um we won't bore you with the rest we're just going to tuck into the food enough yakking Let's get snacking! So we've just crossed over into Stebbing Park and we can sort of start to see the, the landscape of the castle here. It looks like, you're probably not going to be able to see this on the screen, but it looks like there's some, maybe like a ditch and a moat sort of thing here, maybe some sort of rampart. And then you can't see it from here, but just through the trees over there, I could see the, the slope of the mot rising, the mound where the the keep would have sat on top of and it, it looks quite steep it looks like it's quite quite preserved it's marked on os maps as the mount yeah and they've fenced it off as well i can see the deep ditch of it it looks pretty cool it reminds me a little bit of onger castle chipping onger in essex it's very close to where i live and yeah, sort of similar sort of remains there, really. Just a, a big uh, mound and a, a moat and stuff. I'll put a little link to a video up there so you can watch that. It's one of my older ones. And, yeah, here it is. You can just see it just through the trees. There is the, the mount, the mot. 
remains of Stebbing Castle and a ditch over there as well has still got some water in it as well the moat that's pretty cool wow and you can see that's it, it's clearly like a man-made sort of mound it's it's like perfectly straight on its sides and stuff absolutely incredible everyone that is us back in Stebbing High Street we've just popped into the little beer garden of the, the lovely old White Hart pub the landlord was very friendly very uh, chatty she just say we were chatting about walks and stuff and he saw the, the book we had half a strong bow each Candice kindly bought and um, not the best size in the world I'm not gonna no. lie I'd probably give it a 2 out of 10. Close up, battery, battery acid. Battery acid, it's very dry isn't it? And I think the last time I had that I was probably about 16, 17. A long time ago. Uh, the Bowls Club's just kicking off over there. Really They're <laughs> rampant, honestly. There's going to be a punch up there, I tell you. They're going to be like, oi! Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, a word on the Strongbow. Yeah, they didn't have anything else really on tap. I think it was Strongbow on tap or like Magna's and Bulmer's Red in bottles, that was it. They're not a cider pub, obviously. They're a, a BWS, a Beers, Wines and Spirits pub. So, But oh well, that's our first uh, beer garden session, I suppose, since the lockdown and everything. And it's just nice to sort of be back in the pubs. you got this old pub that's now a house yeah. here, the King's Head. And the Red Lion was a pub. Well. The red line, yeah, down the other end of the high street. Anyways, the car is just across the road. I am going to love you and leave you and sign off here. So thank you for joining us on this lovely little walk. The first walk from the year-round walks in Essex book. The first spring walk. It's been great. Yeah. It's been a pleasure walking with Candice as always. And it's been a pleasure for you joining us. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, look after each other and stay safe everyone. Be nice to each other. I'll see you soon. Bye. Happy days. Happy days. Candy's drunk that too quick. <laughs> Bye.